Millions of kids aren't so lucky, and that's why this week we're seeing all kinds of help popping up on the internet. We've been hearing some thumping noises in the distance, and that means some floors and some walls have been caving in. When that happens, that means the fire is spreading farther. And in fact, it spread to yet a third building back there behind all of that smoke. Things have gotten progressively worse in the last hour. The wind, as you can see, is already picking up quite a bit. Maybe in the last three minutes, we're starting to see some rain. Even though that freezing drizzle has stopped, and we've kind of been showing this all morning, this layer of ice is getting thicker and thicker. So this is what you're seeing on the roads this morning, you guys. Police say a teen living with his brother in these apartments walked across the street and robbed this gas station on Tuesday morning. They say 24 hours later, he did it again. You guys, the wind just came in. It's painful. Screaming I mean, it cold. It's screaming cold weather. Yeah, I mean, it's not even uncomfortable. Yesterday was a little uncomfortable. Today, ow. Today it ow. hurts. <laughs> it's awful. <laughs> People who were near this warehouse when the fire started say it started small. There weren't even flames, but that changed quickly. Was this building is? They used to put oil on the floors to keep the dust down in old factories, and I imagine this one has that uh, big, heavy timber floor. And right after we talked with the battalion chief, he told us the building, about a hundred years old, would collapse. And minutes later, it did. Bricks crumbled to the ground and fire exploded out the windows and broken walls. And it became dangerous and hot. Just standing across the street hurt. The flames from the warehouse shot across some railroad tracks and set this building right behind me on fire. Now that's another business. And we've been hearing some thumping noises in the distance. And that means some floors and some walls have been caving in. When that happens, that means the fire is spreading farther. And in fact, it spread to yet a third building back there behind all of that smoke. And right next to that third building, a neighborhood full of homes and scared people watching that fire come closer. It looks like a tornado with the wind blowing. I mean, it's the wind's pretty bad, so I know it's got to be hard for the firefighters. Tracy Johnson says she was afraid for herself, her husband, and her three kids. This makes you wonder how far is it going to go, you know. It's already pretty bad. The fatal car fire in Brooklyn Center. It happened at Highway 252 and 66th. The crash involved several cars. Mary Costello was on the scene with more details for us tonight. Mary? Well, Dennis, accident reconstruction crews have just finished up their investigation here. The tape has now come down, and we are now learning a lot about what's been happening throughout the night, and uh, we just learned there were about five cars involved in the crash. Now, as for the crash itself, here's what we know so far from police. They say that the driver of a Chrysler LeBaron, you can see it there, he died in what was actually a rear-end crash involving the five vehicles. Traffic was stopped here at 66th Street eastbound, and then Police say a vehicle came from behind and reportedly hit a car or the cars in front of it. Now, the LeBaron didn't explode, actually, but it caught on fire and was soon engulfed in flames. State police don't know exactly how the driver died, and his name won't be released until tomorrow. One woman, a 31-year-old woman named Melissa Haas, was taken to the hospital. She is expected to be okay. Two other people were also treated for injuries in this crash. State police say if we should know one thing about this crash it was alcohol related on a night with wet roads and these roads are getting wetter and you know they're going to become more slippery especially to the north so dennis unfortunately this is a reminder about the dangers of drinking and driving all right so one fatality one person yes. taken to the hospital but we think she'll be okay but she's okay correct Lieutenant Ralph Wildenhaus was 21 years old when his plane crashed during World War II. He was buried in Dayton, but all of his possessions, somehow in the last 60 years, lost. Until this trunk showed up at a garage sale two weeks ago in St. Petersburg, Florida. Susan Zaffeter and her husband wouldn't be adding it to their antique collection. Joe and I looked at it for a little while and realized that this was someone's life. After searching online, Susan found Rosemary Brunn, Ralph's only surviving sister, in Dayton, Ohio. And Thursday, Susan and her husband sent the trunk up north. I think I'm kind of nervous. My heart was going 100 miles an hour. 
Thank bring you. that trunk in. <laughs> that what bring that saying? trunk in, yes. How are you today, ma'am? Uh, Hi, just fine, thank you. Well, would you like me to put this inside? Yeah. Yes. Oh, it's rusty. Oh my goodness, me. Inside were the things Rosemary had heard about and seen on TV, but now she could hold them in her hand. Oh, I just don't know what to grab first. But there was so much here that Rosemary hadn't seen, like all of the baby clothes. And, and to see that little hat there. I... <laughs> His wife made all of our children a little hat like that for their baptism. It's there isn't anything in the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I could want more than this. Lieutenant Ralph Wildenhaus died while serving in World War II 64 years ago. But now, Rosemary remembers what it was like to be his little sister. His life is in there. Yeah. He, had a, he had a short life, but he lived it well.